tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, here you see a particle, that's the orange one, emitting particles, the blue ones. What is special about this rendering? Well, it has to do with the scene size. The scene size here looks tiny, like uh, molecules in a human body, for example, in the bloodstream. And uh, you might actually be able to use this for in such a context. Uh, the reason why we feel that it's tiny is because we have that very strong depth of field effect. So the rendering does a depth of field which is very, very narrow. This is in focus, but the following particles are not. And uh, all these things are left behind. When you do rendering with motion blur, you see a lot of grain. And you have to tweak the render settings, the anti-aliasing is special, to get rid of them. But uh, actually they can be quite nice indeed. Before we create a new scene and I show you how to achieve this effect, uh, let me remind you of two tutorials which have nothing to do with this. I just want to recommend you uh, to watch them because uh, I like them so much. One is about the uh, motion capture gloves. Uh, which is an affordable technology these days. And the other one is about creating objects in Maya or in other 3D programs and then bringing them into the real world, a real 3D print. Okay, the image uh, which we've seen rendered here with depth of field is this one. It looks so crude and simple. And uh, when we run the simulation, this is how it goes. The particles shoot from that N sign, it stands for nucleus. They shoot to the right and they emit lots of particles. Of course, when you emit particles from particles, you need to take into account that uh, it's a mass of particles. So be cautious with the emission amount. We start with an N particle and we find the N particles here under rendering FX because it's a special effects thing. N particles and we create an emitter. We don't emit from an object, we just create an emitter which sits in the center of the scene. It emits particles of which fall down and they are little dots and we need to change a few things which are all pretty straightforward. Just uh, follow me here. First of all, we have in the attribute editor, if you don't have that open, Control A opens the attribute editor, uh, this whole window part here, uh, and we don't want to have them shooting uh, down. That's why we go to the nucleus here, which provides the gravity and wind, etc., and we reduce the gravity from 9.8 to 0. Now the particles spread in all directions and they don't feel gravity because there is no gravity. Second thing we're going to do is we go back to the emitter and in the emitter we don't want to have so many particles. Let's reduce them to 2 instead of 100. Now we have an emission of only very few particles which you see in the center of the scene. Next thing we want to, in, in order to get a clarity here, we want to shoot them into a direction, for example, the right direction. The direction is sitting here. Direction X is set to 1, so they shoot to the right. They currently live forever, and that's the next thing we're going to do. We go to the particle shape. If you don't find this here, it's here, end particle. And here is the particle shape. Uh, here we change things in, uh, well, I think three menus. One is the shading. We open the shading and we have re particle render type is set to points. In order to render them properly and see them properly, we want spheres. Then we close this. We might go back here, but uh, now for now we close it. And here up here is the particle size. and uh, the radius is by default set to 0 0.2. Let's set it to 0 0.1. So we have smaller particles now. When we run the simulation, 
that's what they do. We go to lifespan because we don't want them to live forever. So we can change it to, from live forever to random range. And the random range, a lifespan of say three seconds with a lifespan randomness of one and with a seed, the seed is just a parameter, you can leave it at zero, it's just a parameter which uh, tells Maya where to start that random process, for example 33, and um, now the particles don't live forever, they die after more or less three seconds, you see them dying. We could also use a little bit more speed, so we go back to the emitter because the emitter is responsible for the speed. Where is the speed? Here under the emitter tab, the speed is set to 1, let's set it to 2. This is a very basic and important procedure for setting up particles. I extend the frame range here, so we have 200 frames to watch. Now how do we get these particles to emit particles? Well, just select them and go to end particles and emit from that object. In the outliner we have two particle systems now and um, under the the group, the, that's a group now, the end particle one, that's the white spheres, we have the emitter because it's all of a sudden it's an emitter number two. So it emits objects from those spheres, which is pretty straightforward and you actually are finished with this, unless you want to change the second particle in terms of size and uh, shading. So let's do the same thing as before. We set this to spheres and um, we go further down and here we have a color and we select that color and we make it light yellow and we go up again we close the shading tab, we go to particle size and we re reduce this to 0.02 so they are very small or 0.5 and you see they are sort of unpredictable because the white spheres they started at the very center and then they shot out into the x direction and now they shoot into all directions and that is because of the you find that collision under collisions because they collide with each other if you uncheck this you have a straightforward emission like this which maybe serves your purpose better i don't know now let me delete these particles, this one and that one. So we're back to the original scene. And now I want to show you a different method and that's the method which I showed you in the rendering actually. Uh, we select the particles and we create, actually we modify and we convert these particles, which I just selected, to polygons. This has advantages and disadvantages, but it's a very important way to create particles from particles, actually by converting the original particles into polygon objects. And when you run the animation and the simulation, you don't see anything in some cases you might actually see something and that has to do with the particle size. I did a tutorial about uh, creating polygons from particles uh, where I show this more in depth. When you go to the end particle node here you see a section which is called output mesh because we have a mesh now, a particle system which is a polygon system now and you have two parameters which you might uh, consider changing. The mesh triangle size, that means the amount of triangles in your new particle polygon object is, uh, you make it smaller from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1 for example. Does this change anything? 
you sort of see things now and you can reduce the threshold and now what you see is polygon objects and from the polygon objects you can now select them that's a polygon surface it's one surface actually in the uh, polygon world you can do this in the NURBS world these would definitely be not one surface they would be four surfaces in this case uh, by the way they behave the same way as the particles we created in the first place so they die after a certain time and now I have sel uh, selected them and um, I emit from that object same thing as before but now we're creating particles from these spheres and you see they behave totally different from what we've seen before because um, of the interaction and the collision of these particles very interesting system again and um, this concludes the two basic methods in the n particle world how to create particles emitting particles of course you can emit the particles from the particles from the particles etc when I prepared this tutorial I thought about creating particle emissions from particle emissions using the Bifrost graph methodology which is under Windows and it's the Bifrost graph editor and in the Bifrost graph editor this looks very complicated but it's very simple actually and it's the I think to me a beautiful method to emit particles from particles but I leave that to another tutorial which I publish pretty soon have a nice day bye bye